Game over, man. It's game over. All right, this is Playing Games Poorly. I am Tim. And I'm Joe. And welcome. Today we are playing Sonic the Hedgehog 1. A game I realized I haven't played in a long time. I normally play Sonic 2. And occasionally Sonic 3. See, I like Sonic 1 because he didn't have any powers. It was all just run and duck and spin. He didn't have spin dash. He didn't have any of the, you know, his power-ups were contained to invincibility and the shield. I think he needs the spin dash. I was a little thrown off not having the spin dash. I would agree. I, I think, it, you know, you, you, when you play those games, you get a little, not really lazy, but, you know, you kind of depend on him to be able to use that ability because, you know, when you don't have something after so long of playing it, like, you feel like you're missing something, like an arm or a leg or something like that. It's, it's just... You don't feel right. I was a little... I was definitely thrown off not having a spin dash. I'll admit. So, overall, I... Uh, I so this is all me playing this game. Um, also, the bonus levels in this game are absolute garbage. I always, always, always hated them. Well, just, this, well they just this took... Version. Yeah, they just took so much effort, you know, and, and you, if you, you know, got a wrong turn or wrong... You know, it... It made it really difficult to do, and it was the only way to get the Chaos Emeralds. And you could only get into those if you ended the level with 50 or more rings mm -hmm. to even activate the... I thought it was 60. It's 50, and if you um, took damage, you know, you, you lose your, all your rings, and you have to pick them up, and it was like this mad dash to find out where you are and where your rings are. So it was like this ring management slash, you know everything else, but the thing I did like about Sonic was the fact that you could get hit in essentially an unlimited number of times, as long as you had at least one ring when getting hit, you could keep going. You know, if you took damage well with zero rings, that was the end of that run. Yeah. And you had to start back at your last checkpoint or at the beginning level, whichever came first. And they were really generous with checkpoints in this game. You know, I, I really like the music, it just, it definitely has that rough, crude 80s, 90s, you know, late 80s, early 90s feel to it. You know, you felt like... Oh, I always consider this a 90s game. Well, yeah, but you, I mean, you still felt like a badass. You know, the, the, these games were geared toward teenagers. They weren't, you know, for your young kids like your Nintendo games were at the time. They mm -hmm. definitely were marketed toward a more mature or semi-mature audience. It wasn't just all rainbows and sunshine. It was... Sega does what Nintendo. Exactly. So, through stage two, yet again, no no real issues with this. Well, the nice thing is that these had three acts to every zone. Your first two were getting you to you know, through the level, kind of get the feel for what the zone was all about, and then your third one, you had to do, you know, a short-ish version of the other two to get to the boss. Yeah. In Sonic 2 and 3, they minimized that, so you only had two and sometimes three zones, or X to a zone, uh, kind of streamlined, because I think people were like, okay, after the second one, I, you know, after the, you know, before the third one, I get it. You're like, it's the zone. I, I don't have to go through 13 of these to get to the boss. You know, one or two is, is, is plenty. Yeah, well, it consistently became only, what, two? And then the third... So, in the... In the ones that they kind of retroactively made for the Master System, it was always you had two acts, and then your third act was just a boss battle. Right, but... You know, with this one, you still had to go this through. This one, yeah, you had a whole stage that you had to go through. Yeah, it didn't feel like it was as long. Here, you're trying to grab that power up on top of the, of the perk screw, and it's like... I think I just gave up. Yeah, I think you gave up, because like, the timing was just wrong. But overall, graphics on the game, very good. That blast processing in action, look at that. See right there, you could if you had the spin dash, you could have gone through, or had enough momentum, you could have gone through the the wall. But without that spin dash, and you were at a dead stop, it just wasn't going to happen. That's all right. All right, 
checkpoint right before the boss, which is nice. You don't have to go very far. So, eight hits for Robotnik. The Eggman himself, um, Dr. Robotnik. Always had uh, a different theme to his weapon based on or his, you know, end boss vehicle. This one, pretty easy as long as you kind of get the pattern down. I mean, they all, they all had patterns, but... pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, overall, this this game is very playable. Um, I was actually a little nervous about playing this, because I knew I could get... I can beat Sonic 2, and, like, we had just recently beat Sonic CD. Um, and with um, Sonic Mania coming out for the Switch, I've been playing a decent amount of Sonic, so I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't know how well this is going to go. I haven't played it in a while, so I'm I might just get a little, little level lost. But well, the, the nice thing I liked about Sonic Mania for the Switch was the fact that each game's level system kind of went through each of the games that they were representing. So the first level of Sonic Mania was Sonic One. The only difference is you had the spin dash, you had the fire power up and the water power up and the electric power up. So it was cool is when I was running through with that one part where the bridge was spiny and thorny, if you have the fire power up, you actually burn that thing and it's gone. I thought that was a really nice touch that, mm -hmm. you know, to the immersion that you don't normally have in Sonic 1 because you don't have that power up. Yeah. No, it was a well-made... Uh, game. I've been I've been digging the heck out of it. Yeah, no, I I really enjoy the the fact that it, you know. Well, I like the bringing back a lot of these side-scrolling platforming games as newer versions yeah. to kind of play along with. <laughs> so, what do you what do you think about that Sonic movie that's supposed to be coming out? So, as you saw, they the first time they put out the trailer, they totally messed it up and fans lost their shit and so much so that that you know the internet banded together and they redid a lot of assets and it's why it pushed back the release date so much because fans were just so displeased from just you know getting this preliminary trailer that they essentially forced them to redo what Sonic looked like because he looked like this drowned rat Thing. It looked like a science experiment gone wrong. Well, even when they redid it, it still doesn't look good. I th I think it I think it looks better than when they first tried it. I, I'm I'm positively optimistic. I'm not saying I, I like it any more than I did before. I'm but I'm optimistic that it will be received better by the fans uh, than the original you know, attempt at it. And I, I think, you know, I think Jim Carrey is a good idea for Dr. Robotnik. He's he's crazy. He's witty. You've never really seen anything from Jim Carrey in a while. I, again, I'm optimistic that he's going to portray Robotnik correctly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to go see it. I, I don't know about you, but like I said, I'm, I'm at least going to give it... I'm going to entertain it. I don't know. It. I might wait till it's on Netflix. And that's okay. I, I, I'm going to go entertain it because... You know, I have been playing Sonic since, you know, 91, 92, when, uh, actually, Matt and I got this, Matty Q and I got Sonic 1 as the inbox for Christmas. Um, when, when you got your Genesis? When we got our Genesis. So, we... So I didn't buy a Genesis till in high school, yeah, so, so I only ever played your Sonic. Yeah, well, I mean, but I mean, Tim, uh, Matt and I played the bejesus out of, out of Sonic. We, we loved our Sonic, and I got really good at um, at the Genesis games because, you know, I was, you know, I, not that I was too young for the, the NES, but I really was too young. You know, Matt was, Matt's a, you know, a few years older than me, so he, he could, uh, you know, he played the NES more than I, than I did, and I definitely feel like I was to the point where I could play more Genesis games, which is why, you know, I can rock through Aladdin on the Genesis like it's my job. Like that's that's my go-to 
Um, Maybe we'll do a special with you, Long Play Gaming Aladdin. Yeah, because I can actually beat that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Playing games moderately. Moderately. <laughs> so, I love the music in this level. This is probably my favorite music, or if not the second favorite in the game, because it just, it's got such a cool feel to it. It's very dungeon-y. You definitely feel like you're in this mystic castle, you know, it's it's a it's all marble. It's the it's the you know it's the marble zone, and you you know there's fire and, and you know all these pitfalls and traps, and, and if you screw one jump up, you got to start all the way at the bottom of the of the climb again. And not one Avenger is in here. Can't call it the marble zone. If there's no Avengers. Marble marble zone. Uh, there's no marble. It, it, it's made of, made of marble. The, the stone. It's, it's it's made of marble. Yeah, but no marbles. You, you're correct. There are no glass marbles in this in this zone. However, I mean, with the, with the lava, you could make glass. You could make marbles. Maybe that's what happens. With Sonic. Zero, yeah. zero marbles. If Sonic falls into lava, he becomes a marble. I don't think that's how that works. I, I, I think that. But <clears throat> yeah, other than the lack of marbles in this. Um, overall, it's a it's a fun stage. It's your generic fire stage that you're getting in quite a lot of these games. Everyone has a fire stage, a water stage. You know, elements were always huge in game production with a lot of these, um, and and they should be. You know, rarely did you get a heart stage though. Captain Planet stuff going on there. Yes. Is there a Captain Planet game? At least one. Um, maybe? Yeah, we should definitely look into that. It's just a game where you have to recycle. There's no Captain Planet in it. It's just like with the, the kids, and you have to do everyday tasks to help the planet. I mean, that sounds riveting. I, I, I think we should make this as a, as a cover game if it doesn't already exist. Yeah. Captain Planet in the Recycling Center. One stage, you have to just plant trees. That's it. That just sounds very, very toxic. Like actually plant trees. Like it's like you have to like use your actual muscles. Yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, this so is what it. was your favorite Sonic game? Uh, out of all the Sonic games in there, I'm guessing two or probably Sonic and Knuckles, but I guess more of a why that over other ones. So. I also can beat Sonic 2 um, really well. It's the one I played the most. Um, though, I I liked to play Sonic 2 as Knuckles because that's the way I liked it the most, and it was one of the coolest features that uh, the, the Genesis had was there was an overlay game. You could put Sonic 1, 2, or 3 into... Um, into Sonic and Knuckles, and you could play as a different character. Um, Sonic One, it didn't have the capacity because they didn't design it to do that. So you only could play the the um, two and a half D, D, three D levels where you had to run around and collect the the blue orbs. Mm -hmm. But in Sonic Two and Sonic Three, you could actually play Sonic Two or Three as Knuckles. And Knuckles was cool because he had a climb ability and a gliding ability. Um, so it, it not really was a cheating, but it was it was an aspect of the game that the character had that was different than just you know as you know playing as this you know run fast Sonic or as you know Tails that you know was just nobody played this yeah because he was just useless. I think in Mania, I think he he has a helicopter ability, which you know is cool, but it's it's limited. Tails is just, like, better at finance. I mean, he was the smartest uh, creature in the Sonic universe. Yeah. He had an IQ of 300, which is not a thing, but for the sake of Sonic, we'll just, we'll, we'll just say he's the smartest, sure. smartest thing. They should have made him sly, because he's a fox. But he was... It was a, a play on words. His name was Miles Prower. And he had two tails, so if he was miles per hour, 
Oh. Really bad joke there, but that's why he was he was known as Tails because he had two tails and he could turn them into a propeller. And you know, if you were running, he could run faster with the tails that would spin like a propeller. And then if he had his tail the other way, it turned into a propeller and he could carry Sonic or things like that. Like it, it was gimmicky. Well, he was designed as a helper character. He was really. definitely he, he was well. That's why a lot of these, especially in Sonic 2, one of the modes you could play is just Sonic, just Tails. Or Sonic and Tails, and he he was a companion creature for you, and, and he could yeah. help you. And a lot of times, he would just keep dying. You could kind of make him attack Robotnik, mm. and it didn't matter how many times he died because you were the main, and, and he was just the secondary. So it was, it was neat. I always liked. Um, see, my favorite Sonic actually after playing it was uh, I like Sonic CD a lot. CD was CD was really cool because it, it, it was. I like, liked that all the Robotnik battles were puzzles. Like you had to actually fit. Like it wasn't just you were battling Robotnik. Like it might have been a chase, or it might have been like like there was different elements to it. Yeah, and and, and they definitely imp implemented that into Mania. You definitely yeah. You had to figure out how to beat him. It wasn't just straightforward attack him, hit him eight times, and it was done. Yeah. Which is something they did pretty much throughout the main series games. Was just they put in Mega Man 11? They have some different puzzles and stuff in it too, which I really, really enjoy having a little bit of a puzzle at uh, puzzle aspect in my platforming games. So, well, here's where you found the the secret one up in the level, which if you kept dying, you could, as long as you went back to that point, you could infinitely play this level as long as you got that. So as long as you needed. Yeah. Um, so, worst wor Sonic game? Sonic 06, probably? Yes, it's regarded as one of the worst Sonic failures. It might be one of the worst games ever. It, it just, I feel like they're, the, the problem that a lot of people say is they rushed it. You know, they, they, they feel like they had to get it out, and it, some people even ask, did they playtest this game at all? Like, it, it just... You well, get... you know what, I don't think Sonic translates well as an RPG. And like it, even in the like the Sonic Adventure games, I don't think it translates well 3D. I don't. Yeah, it's, it's I, even the Sonic Adventure games, I don't particularly yeah. care for. No, it was definitely a, a 2D uh, side scroller. You know, it was meant to go fast. Got to go fast. Got to go fast. Which was their 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 big you know tagline was. Yeah. You know, and that's what you did. You 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 went fast. And anytime you didn't go fast, Sonic got angry. Like he did his little uh, teeter totter thing. If you're on an edge, which is kind of fun. And in, I think it was CD, I think it was 3, if you waited too long at any point, especially in the beginning, he would just jump off the screen. He was like, you know, if you're not going to play my game, why are you bothering? He would just kill you off, just, you know, jump off the screen. Mm -hmm. And it was, I know he starts tapping his foot at some point. He does, because he's, you know, he's Sonic. He wants to go fast. And if you're not going fast, he doesn't have time for you. He's this rash, badass guy. Okay, bored now. Yeah, pretty much. You know, he he had the red shoes, and you know he was he was fast. Mm -hmm. You know that last processing and that uh, you know everything, which is why it was fun about these these stages is you know when you were flying headlong into the right side of the screen, you didn't know it was ahead of you. You in nine times out of ten, you hit an enemy or a spike or something. You lost all the rings you'd collected. You had to get some of them back. Yeah, there's definitely some reaction that you have to keep up with in this game. Yeah, but I mean, I think that was kind of the fun part about this was it was different. You know, it wasn't just platforming. It was seeing how quickly you could get through the, through the stage. I mean, as you notice, there's, there was, like in Mario, the timer goes down. If you notice in Sonic, the timer goes up. You had uh, 10 minutes per life to complete the level. I don't know if I ever knew it was 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a, I guess that's an Easter egg for you. It's it's 10 minutes, and if, if you get to that 10 minute mark, it'll actually kill you off. So, um, so you have you have 10 minutes. Oh, well, I just died. You so. just died, right? Yeah. So so it's, it's you'll, it'll reset for you. And since you didn't get any checkpoints, you start over. Yeah, I think I needed to. Yeah, I mean, you were at the seven minute mark. Like, you, you, you definitely got some good information, but this, this. Yeah, yeah. Some of these playing these again, you just have to kind of find your way through. Yeah, you gotta feel it out. And with Sonic, there's so many levels that are so close to other games, they kind of mesh in my head a little bit. So I had definitely like 
I 100% had to try and remember where a lot of things were. Well, that's you know, kind of the point of our, our show is to yeah. pick it up, you know, and... and, and uh, pick it up and play it cold, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, give me a day, and I'm obviously this is one of the better games that I've that we've done on this show. Yeah. We've so, I mean, give me a solid couple of days and I'll, I'd probably be able to beat this game. Yeah. But that was, you know, the whole point is we just, we see how far we can get. Sometimes we go pretty far. Sometimes we don't, you know. Some days we play games mediocre, which is, which is, you know, refreshing instead of just getting to the first level and dying. You know, it's, some games we're actually okay at. Oh, we're good at games. We just don't play those. Not in this show, anyway. That's for Matt and my other show. Yes. Well, you know, like I said, I, I really enjoyed this level speed, and I, I thought that was cool. You you definitely somehow glitched out the, the spikes there and didn't take damage when you totally should have, which was really cool. And then you lost your spike. Yeah. I think you were trying to go to the other side. I think you thought you were in a different part of the level, but that's okay, because this one does get pretty confusing, because it does definitely very maze-like. Oh, it's not even maze-like, it just it all looks the same. Also, those in inchworms are my like least favorite character in this entire game. Well, you can only hit them on the head, and if you miss that jump just by a little bit... It's where you desperately need a dash feature, and those are no longer a problem. Right, in, in the preceding games, in 2 and 3 and so on, they... they They're have, really easy. Yeah, yeah. You, you just dash into them, you know, anytime that you're in your spike form, you almost can't be damaged. It's it's very difficult to be damaged when, when you're spiking, but when you're running, the only time you're going to be in your, your spike form is if you're going, like, downhill and around, you know, through the... through the, the corkscrews. And, yeah, that's... This is definitely not that level. Like, level one was definitely the intro to that feature. And, and everybody yeah, knows. I mean, for level variety, this level is drastically different than level one. Yeah, and I, I think I like that. I think it's it's. I do too. Because if it was all the same, like, why would you why would you play this? You want some variety. You want some different. This one does need maybe one or two like spots where you can kind of just be a ball. Like, I think this particular level is missing that, and I think they kind of, in two, they remedied a lot of that, of... They gave each level... Each level still felt very different, and you still definitely had to do some different things, but they gave them more, like, kind of Sonic features to it. This does not necessarily feel as much like a Sonic level. Yeah, because this is, this is just straight platforming. Yeah. There's very little running in this level. Yeah, the, the whole gotta go fast is not... It, it, and honestly, even just this particular stage, like the the top part when you're kind of running along the lava pieces in the first couple of acts of this, it's it still kind of feels like it. But like when you get down into this dungeon, it's you're you're back onto a regular platforming game, which I like too. And it definitely breaks up that you know one trick pony that the game has. Yeah. But then again, like you said, without you know, certain powers or power-ups, it doesn't have that same feel. I hate bats. Yeah. Bats are just terrible altogether. It's just... I think Castlevania taught us anything about bats. Yeah. I mean, they're not Medusa heads, but... Oh, God. Like, the only, the only reason I can hit If those... this level had Medusa heads, I would have rage quit. I don't think you would have made it as far as you did. No. <laughs> then it really would have been poorly. I'm a very good Castlevania player. The damn Medusa heads give me the worst, worst time. Well, they they fly in a figure eight, and it's. No, I don't. I can't think of another enemy that does that. Well, it's yeah. I guess figure eight is an S pattern. Yeah, it's like a sine curve. But like, if you look at it, they each fly opposite each other. Yeah. So when you're Looking at them, they, you know, I've seen people map out their their flight path, and it's it's bad. They take up like 20, 20 30 percent of the screen, and then you have to, you know, some other enemy. It's just terrible. But you're back up top, and uh, still a lot of platforming up here yeah. too. But we're almost to robot. 
see, and that's the thing is like whenever I see like fl you know um, the flames come up like that, like I always think of Mario, and I want to call them Potaboos, even though they're not. So that that's definitely a, a Nintendo thing. All right, so same robot, Doctor Robotnik, different weapon, and it's always themed to level. So you know, fire level, more fire. Nice thing is they give you the checkpoint right before the boss, so yeah. But this time, you know, you get hit once and you're you're done. Something I didn't like, you know. It's, in later games, they at least give you an opportunity to, to collect some rings to give yourself that second hit, that second try. You know what the patterns are? As soon as you find out the pattern on this, it's pretty easy to beat. Him. But I feel like that's like you just uh, honestly with with most of these Sonic games when you're playing Robotnik, especially in Sonic 1, as long as you're not greedy, he, he's really easy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's usually, you just, you get greedy, and that's when you end up getting hit. That first time, I I could have beat him, but I was trying to beat him faster, and you just gotta wait it out. Yeah. So, Spring Yard, this is a level I don't remember at all. This is where I got very lost very quick. Um, it's designed very much like kind of how the casino level is in two. Um, same and, similar and, feel and, to and it. Three respectively too. And three respectively too. And and pretty much every other Sonic game too. Yeah. Well, maybe really cool too. They, yeah. They, they had the, the snapshots and they felt filmy and. So some mechanics that for Sonic I I don't particularly like these pieces. Um. I just I've always found them really difficult to navigate. Reminds me of like a pinball machine with those little with the yeah. springs in the in Which it. is what they're supposed to be. That's why I think why they did like Sonic Spinball. So I like I liked Spinball. I, li I liked that it was different. It, it at first I thought it was a mainstream game and then I played it and I was like, "Oh, this is this is not at all." No, it's just pinball with Sonic. Yeah. But that thing is when you curl him up into a ball, he looks like a pinball like which is yeah. novel, you know. But this is where I start really, really failing. Just because I, I don't remember the layout. I don't remember the patterns. But yeah, like I said, you know, if you brushed up with this game and actually, you know, tried where we had Maddie you play through this, you know, it's, it's definitely beatable. It's definitely not an impossible game. It's just learning the levels, learning the mechanics, and... You know, patterns. It's all about patterns. It really was. And, you know. So, from a collector's aspect of this game, you can, you can find a copy of this for 5 to $10. Yeah, this is this one is, is very, very... So, what I always like to ask is, and we'll finish up on this note, is, is, is this game really kind of worth having in your collection? For the most part, it's I think it's a must-have in your collection. It's a staple. It definitely... It's, it's a fun playable game you can usually find a copy very cheap and to me that really adds to the to the value of it and it's it's beatable it's beatable it's pretty cost effective i think it's worth it well on that note looks like we hit the game over screen yep and uh for playing games poorly i'm tim and i'm joe thanks for watching thanks for watching